Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in with me today. What we're going to be talking about is, do you have seasonal body shame? Mm, I wonder. Um, so before we start, um, a reminder, if you have um, not already, um, there is a free Facebook group that I host and uh, you're welcome to come and join it and um, get all the fitty, fitty, fierce fatty, okay, fitty fun, uh, fitty fun. It's called Fierce Fatty Friends. There's a link somewhere around where you're watching this. Um, and if there's not, then just type Fierce Fatty Friends into Facebook and you'll find that free group. Make sure you answer the questions so that we can um, let you in because we want to make sure that you're a real person. So in this video, we're talking about do you have seasonal body shame and what we're going to be talking about is I say we me me and Dougal my dog down there somewhere me and Dougal he's probably gonna not chat that much but we are going to be talking about what is seasonal body shame uh the effects of having seasonal body shame what it looks like year round and discover if you have it in one season or all four seasons, and also how to overcome it. Um, so are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, great. We're ready. Um, so the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I, it's now, it's, what is it, September 16th here now, and um, in the Northern Hemisphere, I'll be talking about seasons for the Northern Hem Hemisphere, it is... Is it the end of summer? It's almost the end of summer. In like a week, it's the end of summer. And we're going into autumn or fall if you're not an autumn word user. Um, and I was thinking, oh, isn't it so nice that so many fat people are um, moving out of this season, which is is sometimes super traumatic um, for us, for fat people, because the season being summer, because a lot of the times um, summer, because of the heat, means that you are exposed to situations where you might have to show more of your body. And it might be socially uh, expected of you to wear a swimsuit or to wear clothes that are, are cooler. And that that feeling of should I show my body and feel uncomfortable because I don't like my body? Or should I stay with clothes on and sweat my tits off and be uncomfortable? And also people saying, are you not hot? And and responding, I did this so many times, no, I'm not hot. Ooh. While uh, wiping sweat from my brow and my upper lip being like, no, I'm not hot. I'm fine. In fact, I'm a bit cold. Do you have a do you have a hat I can wear? Um, because I I didn't want people to know that I was wearing a hoodie um, because I didn't like my body. Right. So anyway, I thought, OK, it's cool that we're moving out of that season and, and a lot of fat people are going to feel a bit better. But then I thought, is it? Is it? Because um, as we move into the other seasons, there's loads of um, events that could mean that you feel bad about your body then as well. It's not just summer. So when I talk about seasonal body shame, this is something that I've made up. Um, and what I mean by seasonal body shame is that as we move through the seasons, are you feeling shame um, about your body because, oh, my God, it's summer and I have to wear these things and it's really stressful for me? Is it just summer that you feel stressed about or is it autumn? Is it winter? Is it spring? Is it the rainy season? <laughs> Wherever you are. Um, and you might be thinking, yeah, no, it's just summer. but I want to read out I want to share with you the different ways that I've come up with in my gorgeous noggin that have in the past triggered me a lot and made me feel a lot of shame about my body uh, because it's so obvious the the having to wear a swimsuit one is so obvious and FYI um, 
there's something that I do a lot is wear a bikini, wear a swimsuit, go dancing around like a twat. And um, that for a lot of people, that is the epitome of confidence. Um, but for me, it, it, it is for me um, in some ways, in some ways not. But uh, for everyone, it's different. Like their expression of confidence is different. And so um, in the summer, if you're like, I don't want to wear a bikini, but actually, you know what? I feel fine about my body. I, I just don't want to express myself wearing a bikini. That's fine. OK, so just an FYI, everyone is different. So if you're not doing these things just because you don't want to do them, then it's not that you're not confident. But if you're doing it because, you know, you really want to wear a bikini and it's your dream, but you don't want to do it because you have a fat body and you think it's bad. Well, then that would be seasonal body shape. Right, 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 right. So again, apologies, it's Northern Hemisphere I'm talking about. Most of my audience is in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. So um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But you know, just switch it around in your brain if, if you're not in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, but it's bizarre, right? When you see people in Australia at Christmas on the beach in Santa hats and you think, what? No, you're doing it wrong. And for people who live in the summer, summer in the southern hemisphere, uh, that is like the epitome of Christmas. Whereas, you know, a lot of the world think snow and cold and all that type of stuff. Isn't it funny? It's so funny. Anyway, okay, so in the northern hemisphere, summer is from June 1 to August the 31st. And so some things that could happen in this season that could tr trigger seasonal body shame are as follows and, and in your head um think yeah yeah that's me yeah you know or no that ain't me I don't know what you're talking about Victoria so first thing that came up for me is in the summer we'll do things like have a family vac vacation I say we I mean you I don't have family. I'm on my own. I'm single, God. So, <laughs> or a single vacation. Uh, so a family vacation or a family holiday. And so some things that could pop up for you there are the one I just mentioned, not wanting to wear a swimsuit, not wanting to go into the pool or going into the pool at times where, you know, there's less people or at nighttime. Um, or wearing a cover up until the very last moments before you jump into the pool. And then as soon as you get out of the pool, like grab your towel so no one can see a, an inch of your body. Um, so that, you know, is that something that resonates with you? Is that something that you do? What about wearing a swimsuit and then posing in a picture for it? Say posing in a picture with your, with your kids, you're all swimming. And someone says, get in a picture with them. Would you hesitate to do that? Would that be like, oh, no, 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 or you'd have to put a cover up on or you wouldn't even be in the picture because you don't want memories of what you looked like in that swimsuit if you're even wearing one. Um, maybe how you feel about your body influences where you go. Uh, maybe somewhere closer to home, somewhere that is more familiar so you know what to expect. So, you know, OK, there's not going to be loads of um, straight size pe people in, you know, thong bikinis, topless, you know, making out with each other or something, because if you saw that, that would be really difficult and that would trigger body shame for you. Now, what about if you went on a tropical holiday, you know, like a all you can eat, you know, drinks included, activities included? fun vacation, I don't know, maybe with your partner or something or on your own. Um, the last holiday that I went on was on my own. I went to Mexico on my own for uh, about 10 days. That was pretty cool. And there was only a couple of times that I felt weird. But the rest of the time I was like, look at me being on holiday on my own. Anyway, so tropical holiday. Now, a big thing for people is going on holiday and then saying, well, because I'm on holiday, I'm allowed to eat food. And yes, absolutely, 1000% you're allowed to eat food. Um, but what they normally do is not eat enough food beforehand. And so um, because they're giving themselves permission, they will eat food and drink, um, maybe drink alcohol or drink, you know, delicious cocktails or whatever and then when they come home they regret it they shouldn't 
and you know they should be drinking and eating all the time you know whatever your body wants and needs um but because they're in a uh, restrictive cycle even though they might not be dieting because you don't have to be actively dieting to be still in that kind of diet culture swing of restricting then um then binging and that, that when i say binging i mean like eating more than what you are used to or maybe more than what your body is used to and that's not necessarily a bad thing but when people experience that they experience um maybe trauma around it they they get anxious about it they feel bad because they've eaten more food than they normally would and then they go back to that restrict and you can't stay in restrict for long you have to go back it's like a swing right and the only way to get out of it is to stop restricting anyway and so in on this tropical vacation where it's all you can eat you might be like fuck it you know because you're on holiday right it's normal behavior but then when you get back you feel bad and maybe you've weighed yourself and maybe you're like oh my god i've put on weight and that is difficult for you what about all of the the amazing activities that they might provide i don't know um going on one of those banana boats or going uh scuba diving um or going on a hike up a mountain uh is that something that will trigger body shame i know for me i would be like oh if we're going on a boat i'd be like well they're not going to have a um life preserver not life preserver you know the thing that you, it's probably a life preserver a thing flotation device thing that you wear when you're just on a boat um i'd be like well they're not going to have one that fits me and so i don't want to go and have the embarrassment of one that doesn't fit or one that's so tight that it's like two tiny little things on my giant body you know you know can they kind of go come down over your tits you know and whereas everyone else it looks quote unquote normal or scuba diving being like well absolutely they won't have anything that fits me and so i don't want to go through that embarrassment of being like oh we have a size zero is that going to work for you uh or if it's something physical like going on a hike going on a walk feeling like well i don't want to keep up the group everyone's going to be faster and better and stronger and i'm going to be really embarrassed because uh i'm going to have to take breaks or i'm not going to be the first in the pack um so do things like that come up for you now are you feeling shame around that now um and by the way the the difference now is that still places won't necessarily have my size or if they do it will be insanely tight uh or if there is a physical activity i might be slower uh an example is uh going um kayaking going kayaking uh, going kayaking with my my nieces who are who are teenagers and um you know they're like oh we've got loads of swimsuits loads of swimsuits and they gave me like the biggest well eh, say maybe one of they gave me they the, the guy just the, the boy the teenager was like yeah this one will fit you and uh <laughs> there was no changing rooms and um and i put it on i put it on fucking backwards and it was to get it on it was just like oh my god is what this is like a fucking workout just trying to get this thing on and um and so i got it on and then the guy's like oh that's back to front and i'm like oh for fuck's sake and then i had to get someone to pull off <laughs> put, it, put it off me because uh it was so hard and then i got it back on anyway then we got it back it was it, but it was really tight it was really tight um and then when we went uh kayaking the instructor had given me a version of the of the kayak which is slightly more difficult to um steer because apparently they have like a little thing on the back which makes it go in a straight line or not and so my nieces both had ones with the thing and so they were like going ahead and i thought you know i'm going to be pretty good at this i'm i'm you know my arm strength is pretty good but i was like way behind them and i didn't think oh this is bad they think that i'm I'm unfit or lazy or whatever. I just thought, oh, this is just what's happening and it's no big deal. And they're having fun and I'm having fun and I can't wait to jump in this water because this wetsuit is so fucking hot. And um, so it just wasn't a big deal. And so now without, you know, without that body shame, I can just go and do things and not make it mean anything about me, you know, versus say if I had that experience before, it would be mortifying. 
um, having to like take this swimsuit off. And by the way, I wasn't in a changing room because I was like, fuck it, I don't care. Um, and then this whole like busload of school kids had turned up. And so there's me like in a fat person in my bikini with, with someone pulling off this skin tight wetsuit. So that would have been like a horror memory of like, oh my God, I remember that time where that like 30 school kids were like staring at me. And, um, but now it's just not a big deal. Anyway, so that is tropical holiday. Well, that could be, you know, any type of holiday. Now in the summer, also, if you have children, maybe your children are off school and maybe your children are off school because of the pandemic and you're like, fucking get back to school, you bastards. Um, normally in a year, maybe if the kids are off school, maybe, I don't know, uh, you might be running around with them more and doing activities, which could be something that is triggering bad body image. Um, and as well, you could be distracted because of that, because of bad body image. Uh, when you are spending time with your kids, distracted because you're thinking, um, I want them to see me in the best light or you're just thinking like what can I eat what am I not allowed to eat and you're just distracted of that uh one one um this week someone posted in my um fierce fatty friends group um and she said that she is constantly worried about her double chin so much so that she's obviously doing things like in photos to disguise the, her chin, her double chin on Zoom when if she's doing conference meetings, doing things to disguise, disguise her chin. But also in front of her kids, she says she's constantly trying to hide her double chin from her kids. Now, if you're anything like what I was like as a kid, or if you have kids or are there anything like average kids, or if I think about my, my nibbling, Finley, he's three years old, he is like fucking up in my face 24 seven, like inspecting my teeth, looking inside my nostrils, uh, like putting his fingers in my ear holes. Like he is all over me and there's no, you know, he is not, you know, he's, he knows what I look like, right? He knows what I look like. It's so funny. And he, I always show him pictures of, of different fat people because he wants to look at pictures of me on the internet. And anytime there's a fat person, he's always like, Auntie Toria, Auntie Toria. And I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. You recognize I'm fat. Anyway, side story. Anyway, another side story. My sister, um, she was uh, in the car with him last week and Lizzo's uh, song, Good As Hell, came on and Finley, my nephew, my nibbling said, this is Auntie Toria's song because he remembered from like a year ago that I danced to this song at the end of my TEDx talk and I had showed it to him once, once and a year ago and he remembered. That was bizarre. I thought that was bizarre. Kids are weird. Anyway, and so in the summer, your kids being home, is that something that triggers uh, body shame? Question mark. Now, most of my lessons are in the US of A. And I was like, do you know what? I know that you have some sort of holiday in the summer where you set off fireworks. I was like, oh, there's one called 4th of July. And then I was like, oh, there's another one called Independence Day. I wonder what the difference is. If you're not like me, you'll be like, um, they're the same fucking thing. <laughs> I had them as two different things, but then I was like, oh, this sounds like it's Independence Day. Yeah, it is. It is Independence Day. And so Google told me, Wikipedia tells me that on 4th of July, Independence Day, people, it's a cultural cultural norm, because I don't know what you do. You do fireworks, family reunions, concerts, barbecues, picnics, parades, baseball games. That sounds fun. But also, isn't it racist, that holiday? I don't. I don't know. Anyway, clearly I don't know anything about 4th of July. So I'm presuming barbecues, picnics, parades, it's 4th of July, it's probably going to be hot. And so in those days when you're out in the public engaging in these things, will you be wearing a nice summer dress or some shorts or something to keep you nice and cool and something to keep you feeling good in the day or would you choose something to cover up more 
Um, what if you do wear a summer dress and you go walking and you get chub rub? Do you blame that on you? Are you like, oh my God, look at me, I'm so fat, I get chub rub? When so many people get chub rub, straight size people get chub rub too, you know, depending on the what their legs are doing. Um, and so are you blaming how your body behaves as, and making it into something bad versus this is just what bodies do? Um, yeah, and are you uncomfortable wearing, you know, like I would, hoodie, jeans, fucking woolly hat, <laughs> scarf, everything to cover myself up but versus wearing something that's cool and comfortable? So that's summer. Now, they're the things I thought of in the, on the top of my head, but you could have other things happening depending where you are in the world, uh, different holidays or celebrations or uh, in, in there is my birthday, uh, different things could, that could be happening for you that are, that is a, is a trigger for um, seasonal body shame. So let's move into autumn or fall. So autumn is from oh, September 1st. I thought it was later. Anyway, whatever. September 1st to November 30th. Now, what happens in autumn? Because I was like, oh, autumn, you know, fat people, we can wrap up in our woolly jumpers and everything is great and fine and, you know, we feel good. Well, a few things that I thought about in autumn that could trigger uh, body shame is the first thing I thought of is Halloween. Now, as a fat person, it is very hard to find a Halloween costume, especially in the store. You know, you have up these all these pop-up Halloween stores. Oh, I fucking love Halloween. It's so good. Um, or these pop-up Halloween stores, and then you'll have, like, the straight sizes, and then you'll have, if they have a plus-size option, it will be plus-size, one size fits all. You're like, no, that's not how <laughs> sizes work, especially for plus-size. Uh, and so... In those moments, are you like, oh, God, see, I'm so fat. I can't even like buy a costume. Why is it so hard for me? Um, and then if you buy a costume online, um, if you, you know, if you manage to do it in time, it's really expensive and the costume will come and it'll be absolute total shit. These costumes, right, they charge so much. Like some of them I've seen are like a hundred dollars. And it comes and it'll be like a piece of like sellotape wrapped to material that's like as thin as toilet paper. And they're like, yeah, $100, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And so then when you put it on your body, you know, it probably looks like shit unless it's, you know, a good one that you've managed to find. And so then in that moment, are you blaming yourself because this costume looks like shit? Or are you like, fucking hell, this costume is shit? and it's not worth this, or it's too small, and, and it's too small, they have misrepresented the the size, or are you, or is it too small, and you're blaming your body again, um, and as well, like, as, as a fat person, I think a lot of fat people have to be a bit crafty, especially, like, with Halloween, because I, actually, you know, I did, I bought a, I bought a costume, when I, I bought a costume, a, um, Dorothy from Wizard of, of Oz costume and I got like the platform glittery shoes and everything it was fucking amazing but that's I think the only costume that I bought and I remember it was so expensive and I was new to Canada and I was like oh this is how much shit costs in Canada like five billion dollars for a Dorothy costume and shoes anyway no it shouldn't cost that much but um since then, I have made all of my costumes because Halloween's a bigger thing in, in North America than it is in the UK. Um, so just an FYI, my costumes, in case you're curious, um, I've been Madonna. And, you know, the Madonna when she had the pointy tits. And so I got I went to like a, a thrift store and got all the different materials and stuff. And I got like padding to put in the tits and the tits. I made them like um, a meter long. And then they were on top of my tits, which are already big. And so they were these giant pointy tits. It looked so good. It was so funny. Um, I dressed as Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife. I think her name was Beth. And I, again, I, I, uh, I, got, I got balloons, put them under my tits because she's got big tits. And so, again, my tits were huge. I think I just like costumes that make my tits super huge. I think that's what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, one time I was Edward Scissorhands, 
and again I, I made the costume uh, I was an Oompa Loompa I made the costume again uh, I was a 90s person and so I got like a, a fanny pack and uh, I made these you know they used to have those baggy trousers I got a skirt and like kind of sewed it and then made a, 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 a top and blah 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 I won best costume for that outfit it was really good so um are any of those things any of those things about Halloween triggering for you now in autumn as well is Thanksgiving for those who celebrate Thanksgiving uh, Thanksgiving is in November in the States and in Canada I think it's in October uh, it's earlier anyway um, so Thanksgiving is should you go home to celebrate with family and have the risk of people commenting on your body, uh, have the risk of commenting on what you eat, what you wear, and you might not have seen your family the whole year, and this is the first time you've seen them since Christmas, maybe, and who's going to be there? Are they going to talk shit about uh, fat people? Are they going to be talking about their new diet or whatever, whatever? And so that could be triggering for seasonal body shame. Now, let's move into winter. So winter, December 1st to February 28th. I don't think these dates are right. They seem too, like, on the nose, you know, at the beginning of the month. I think these are kind of general. So don't don't set your calendars by these dates. I just Googled it, and this is what came up. But now I'm looking at it, I'm like, I don't think these dates are right. Uh, so December to the end of February is winter. So the big one is Christmas. And spending that extended time with your family. And um, Christmas is more likely when the long lost family members come. So Aunt Mildred comes and is like, oh, haven't you got fat? And saying shit like that. Um, yeah, that's that's a, a gr good way to help people feel ashamed about their body. Uh, and gift giving and you know maybe people buying you clothes in the wrong size or people looking at what you're eating or buying you gifts uh, of chocolate but then being like oh she loves chocolate she's so fat or you know things like that all sorts of fuckery goes on around um christmas all sorts of things that will trigger bad body image and it's not your fault by the way <laughs> it's not your fault that this shit happens um now, for me, just like on the flip flip side, so you know what the difference is for when you don't have body shame, is that if I see a long lost relative, I'm just like, like literally today, along uh, a cousin of mine. So remember, I have, uh, uh, I can't remember, a billion cousins, um, 45, 55, can't remember how many, let's say 45. Um, one of my cousins who is he's 22 so I hadn't seen him since he was about six so this cousin uh, came over because um, I'm in Ireland and so this is kind of like the hub for all, all the family comes and this cousin came over and before I would always just be like feel embarrassed and think oh they're judging me because I'm fat they think oh look how fat she is and especially because he's like a 22 year old guy I'd be thinking oh he's just like oh she's gross and oh my cousin's so embarrassing he was there with his girlfriend um and it would be a trigger whereas today uh I was just like oh come on in what you doing what's going on where you going chatting about stuff no big deal see you later have my lunch off you go no problem um and of course you know he didn't come in come in and say well look at you you've got fat uh, but if that had happened, then, you know, I would have been like, whoa, <coughs> excuse me, um, whoa, <laughs> you've turned into a dick, you know. So, but then there are some older family members that think it's it's okay to talk about what you look like. Uh, what are you doing in your life? Have you got married and had kids and all, all that type of shit, which is, uh, yeah, can be triggering. So as well, around the Christmas time, the uh, uh, holidays, around the holidays, what, is there a holiday work party? This would be a big one for me. Holiday work party. And so 
my holiday work party would be fine. But it, if I had a partner at the time and they had a holiday work party, I would be really nervous about it because so my last partner, he was this hunky scientist because I used to always date very stereotypically attractive people. He he kind of looks he kind of looks like a more hunky version of that guy oh, Dexter. He was in Six Feet Under as well. Do you know what I mean? You know the Dexter, the serial killer. Oh, what is his name? His name is something three three letters or something. Anyway, whatever. He kind of looked that, but like even, you know, hunkier sort of thing. And me, looking at me, I'd be like, well, he's very charitable to be dating me. He's clearly such a good guy to date a fat person. This is like his charitable work for the year. Um, so anytime that I was with this guy for six years, uh, my last partner. Uh, so anytime it was a work Christmas party, I would be like, try and make myself look as good as humanly possible because I didn't want his colleagues to be like, oh, why is he with her? Well, he, oh, he's got a fat girlfriend. Oh, gross. Uh, I wanted them to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, your girlfriend's so hot, you know, or something like that. Just ugh. now I'm just like, oh, <laughs> fuck that. Like, who cares? Um, but as well with that boyfriend, um, there was this one girl that he worked closely with and he would talk about her a lot. And when I saw them with each other at the Christmas parties, I always kind of had like a an off feeling about it. Like I always felt kind of a little bit jealous or something. Anyway, after we broke up, that within, I don't know, six months maybe, he started dating her. And he's still dating her now, like years later. And I'm like, mm hmm, hmm. Well, my suspicions were probably, I was probably, I was probably right there somewhere. I don't, I don't think he cheated on me, but still, you know, this, that, that added another layer because I thought about her coming, being at the Christmas party and being like, well, I have to be prettier than her because I had a suspicion about something. Um, but, after a while, because I was with him for years, after a while, I've, I I felt like I was, quote unquote, better than her because uh, one Christmas party, we uh, I was the, the designated driver and she had drunk too much. And in the middle of, of uh, the highway, she opened the door and like threw up everywhere. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be embarrassed by that. And and I was like, shut the door, we're going to die. And so I was like, I'm more responsible than you. <laughs> so I so I got a boost of self-esteem because she threw up in my car. So um, she didn't throw up in the car, but she opened the door. But still, um, yeah, um, she probably didn't even remember that happened. And I was just like, yeah, I'm so much better than you. <laughs> when I've thrown up in cars loads in my time. So, um, yeah, so carrying on with winter, the winter is a big a bit of a doozy. We've got the new year, new year, new you bullshit. So this is a big time for people going on diets, people starting gym memberships. And we all know, you know, what is it, the, the, the date by like the 14th of January, people have quit their diets and they go to the gym once and never go again. Uh, and so there is a lot of body shame and guilt that goes in with starting these diets and starting the gym memberships because they're not coming from a place of do you know what I feel really good about myself and really good about my body and so I just want to go to the gym and stuff like that it's it, it's more likely it's like I feel like a piece of shit I've eaten food over the holidays and I've put on weight and um, therefore I need to lose weight now it's not People don't always put weight on over the holidays. I I have a theory, I don't have any data to back this up, that the intuitive eaters, that our weights are pretty stable throughout the year. But people who are on the diet roller coaster, they'll like I mentioned with the um, you know, going on holiday and having all you can eat stuff, they'll be like, Oh my god, this is amazing, because they're allowing themselves and hot the holiday times, they're allowing themselves because it's a quote unquote special occasion to eat food, and then they feel guilty. And so they might then temporarily lose weight then in January and then something else might come up, you know, they're a human being and they need to eat food and they might put weight back on and 
etc cetera, etc cetera. and so um that whole kind of everything being about food at, at the holiday times for me as an intuitive eater i'm just like yeah the food is nice but you know whatever the food is nice all year round and yeah there's like nice you know memories around certain smells and you know maybe cookies baking and things like that but i don't feel this kind of desperate like oh my god i need it i'm just like yeah i can take it or leave it because i know that i can have cookies year round or i can have eggnog not that i eat that, sh that not that i drink eggnog it's fucking disgusting but theoretically i could have eggnog all year round maybe i couldn't yeah maybe i could you probably like find it on amazon or something but anyway so that is a big trigger the new year for seasonal body shame now winter ending in the end of february something that happens in february is valentine's day so valentine's day is a big one so a lot of people they feel sad if they don't have a partner not everyone obviously um but you you might feel that if you don't have a partner it's because you're too unattractive because you're fat you're too unlovable because you're fat it's too hard to date because you're fat I mean, it is hard to date. Like, it is hard to date. I'm currently trying to date, and I'm just like, most of the time, I'm just like, oh, fuck it. I'll just fucking stay. I'll stay alone. I don't care. It's bullshit. Um, and so you might have all of these things, this kind of shame around why you don't have a partner and making it that it's because you're bad because of your body. Or if you do have a partner, are you concerned that they are like, oh, you've put on weight. I'm going to, I'm going to leave you or, or, thinking like I thought about my partner, they're so charitable to be with me. And so you make an extra special effort on Valentine's Day because they're so kind to be with someone like you. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Valentine's Day can be a, a difficult one as well. Now, our final season is spring. Spring is March 1st to May 31st. So um, something that happens in spring is in the USA, 9th of May is Mother's Day. Um, Mother, uh, Father's Day is 20th of June. We also have things uh, like Trans Parents Day and Non-Binary Parents Day. And depending on the country, they're all kind of spread out through the year. But US Mother's Day is in May. And so a parent or a primary caregiver's a day to celebrate them can be tricky for a lot of people uh, because your parent or caregiver might have been a massive knob they might have been good or great that's wonderful good that's great um but so my dad so when it came to father's day for my dad when i was a, a lot young younger um when he was like he he was dealing with cirrhosis of the liver and going undergoing a transplant and and um he was a dick to my mum and all that type of stuff. And I remember uh, he loved getting hand drawn cards and I loved art. And so I'd always draw him cards. And I remember on father's day, I, I made him a card and I put like hardly any effort in there in it. And I just like drew it with a biro or something. And then I wrote from Victoria and he spotted that. And he's like, you, you have to write love on there, love from. And I, and I remember then I put the love in afterwards and he always kept all of our cards. And um, I remember seeing that card and I seeing seeing the added love uh, because the from was capitalized and then it said like love capital from capital Victoria. And, and because I didn't want to give him a card because I was angry at him for, for being an, an alcoholic. I was angry at him for being addicted to my mum and he was very domineering and controlling and all that type of stuff. And so I didn't want to, but I had to because, you know, if I didn't, then I would be in trouble if I didn't make him a card. Um, now, as I got older and my dad is my dad died a few years ago, I, um, you know, I would still would be <sighs> there'd be something about it. Right. I'd be like, mm, you know, well, you did. You know, you technically you were my father. 
did you as a kid you really let me down you became better as an adult but there was always something there right and then towards the end of his life I could appreciate that he had a ton of mental health issues and and blah 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 now um what about so do you have any type of relationship like that which stems from uh being taught that your body is not okay so with my dad he my dad was was pretty neutral and positive around fatness uh whereas my mum would be very like oh being fat is bad you're a lazy lump things like that um she was good in so many other ways and so i never felt uh begrudged to give her a mother's day card or or um celebrate her because she was she tried her best and um had mental health issues as well uh but that is not the case for a lot of people and so when it comes to these days it can be very triggering and make you feel angry about how you were raised and also if you have kids perhaps uh these days where parents are celebrated you feel guilty because you know that you are passing on bad body image to your kids if you ha yourself have bad body image because it's you know it happens through osmosis you can't kids are kids are smart man you m remember that me telling you about finley one time hearing that song and then saying his auntie song whoa kids are smart and they remember things so another thing in easter in uh, spring is easter now easter uh can be again another one that, that kind of triggers memories of of what you were allowed as a kid and what you had access to as a kid and did you have chocolate or were your siblings allowed chocolate and you weren't allowed chocolate because you were the fat kid or is there a lot of joy around easter um is there uh, the feeling of if you have chocolate in your house um, around easter feeling out of control and and because if you're in that diet cycle still having access to these chocolates and then being like feeling desperate to eat them and feeling like what's wrong with me there's nothing wrong with you you need to eat the chocolate um and so what body image stuff comes up around easter for you now um something that happens a lot around different areas in the world in february february 20th around that time is carnival slash mardi gras uh so this happens in in new orleans um in europe in uh south america it doesn't happen in actually it does happen in it does happen in the uk in like in birmingham and london there'll be mardi gras uh festivals i'm not sure if it's in february but um maybe it is i don't know if there's a certain date for it but anyway mardi gras in february and so mardi gras is there's a lot of people in amazing costumes and a lot of uh people in um you know like uh bras and small underwear and showing a lot of of skin now that could be i know there's a lot of um, people who are plus size who do it and that's amazing but are there people there and you're watching them in their straight size and feeling like oh my gosh their body is better my, than my body. I feel ashamed of my body. Or if you had the opportunity to be in the carnival saying, no, I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to expose my body in that way, even though you would love that experience. Um, so is that something that is triggering for you? So they are the kind of holidays that I thought up in my gorgeous brain for this different seasons but there are things that happen all year round um so for example your birthday now your birthday could be something that is difficult for you uh you could be feeling like oh my gosh i'm getting older and because i'm getting older i'm less worthy my body is getting quote unquote worse i will never be as young and gorgeous as I used to be it's all downhill from here or you you might think yeah fuck yeah it's my birthday Woo! I survived another year and you know obviously it's different for everyone uh or you could be with it as well you with birthday you could be taking stock of the year that that was behind you and the year ahead of you and making judgments about yourself and your body of you know have you put on weight and have you not done enough to be good in in whatever way good around food or good around moving your body or whatever you know it's kind of like something to take stock at the end of the year and uh, and your birthday as well 
Um, as well, parties, you're going to have parties throughout the year. And parties would be a big thing for me of what should I wear? What are other people wearing? Is it going to be more casual? Is it going to be more dressed up? Am I going to look good enough? Are going to be people going to be eating? Should I eat in front of the people? Because will they judge me? Because they're like, oh, my God, there's a fat person eating food. Look at her. She's disgusting. So should I eat before I go? Or but I'm hungry. And should I drink? Because if, if I drink, then I might get hungry and eat food and then people will judge me etc 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 oh my god it's exhausting it's exhausting not liking your body Ugh. um and what about work events uh feeling like you're you're not good enough you're not dressed professionally enough um feeling like oh my god you might get fired i always thought i you know i'm minutes away from being fired all the time um and how do i look do i look especially as a fat person it's hard to get professional clothes um, and so fat people are accused of being unprofessional all the times because of the clothes that we have available to us, especially people who are on the higher end of the fat spectrum, super fat and finny fat people. Um, as well, hanging out with friends. And so doing those types of different types of activities. So I know going from brunch with friends and, and then picking a, a place where there's only like tiny stools with armrests and feeling like you don't want to say to your friends, oh, hey, by the way, that seating is not good for me. And then so they're not going or or not going because they're what that one friend is going to be there who talks about diets and how she's so fat and horrible and and or you do go and you have to listen to them talking about diets and maybe you join in because you want to be sociable um, maybe they're doing physical activities and you're anxious because they don't understand that you might be slower or not um, or worried that they hear you being out of breath or not um, or just them judging you and of course you know we have different friends and some we're we're, we're ourselves with and we're absolutely um, close with but then there are other friends who are kind of like we're not as close with or they're newer friends or they're friend, frenemies, friends that we shouldn't really have in our lives. Um, yeah, so is that something that is a thing for you? And what else? What else is going on in your life that is a, a, a something that's recurring, something that comes around all the time, maybe something that's yearly, maybe something that's that's monthly or weekly even or daily that is triggering for you. And so um, triggering for that, that 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 shame that you have or you might have around your body. For me, previously, when I didn't like my body, my big uh, triggers would be that summer season and me sweating my tits off being like oh no I'm fine I'm not hot Victoria your <laughs> your hair is soaked with sweat are you sure you're not hot no <laughs> oh that's just hair gel what are you talking about um <laughs> and as well new year new year feeling like I want to be good I just want to be good I want to be thin I want to be an, an athlete and so I'm going to start doing all these things and they're not sustainable because weight loss is attached to them. And then, you know, I would stop doing them because it wasn't sustainable. And then I would feel like a big piece of shit. Um, and family gatherings where I hadn't seen people in a while. And because living in, in Canada would mean that most people I wouldn't see in a while and especially like older relatives who wouldn't follow me on social media how dare they not follow me on social media um, and so they hadn't seen what I look like in in you know a few years and just being like oh and it's a phrase around my family I don't know if it's an Irish phrase but it's around my family people they say they see you and they say you're looking well and I would always every time I'd hear that you're looking well I would it wasn't something they weren't saying you look like a fat loser they were saying you're looking well but I would just hear I have assessed your body in the millisecond it took before me saying that I have assessed you and I've made a judgment and I'm saying you look well and you look well feels like oh you're here you know versus if they really thought that I looked good they'd be like you look good you know either way I'd wouldn't want that judgment on my body and so it'd be stressful for me um yeah 
So the reason why I wanted to talk about this subject is to show um, how body shame is not limited to one time of the year, you know, summertime. Um, it's not a once in a year event for most people. It's not, you know, just at, at the holiday times and then also in the summer. It is year round. It is month after month, week after week, day after day. And this is not even talking about the kind of low hum of discontent that disliking your body, you know, that low hum every day disliking your body feels like constant just just a pressure on your brain of you know catching yourself in the mirror and feeling like I don't look good I should be thinner I should stop eating um so my question is how many times do we have to travel around the sun before really focusing on this stuff or saying to ourselves there's more important stuff to focus on um, this stuff, if we don't work on it, we'd be with us forever. And we've seen it. So many people who have shame around their body, it's an a intergenerational thing. Their, their caretaker, their parent, their mum, their, their grandparents, their aunts, whatever, whoever have passed it down to them. And so this stuff, it's not like this is just going to be last with one person. If one person hates themselves, that's it. That's the only one who's affected. It affects everyone around. And so if you think, okay, well, maybe if I live to 80 or 90, so 90 years, this will go on. But if you have children or if you know other people, then their lifetime could potentially be affected. And the people around them. Like how many hundreds and thousands of lives and years um, do we have to waste by feeling like we're not good enough because of, you know, not having a partner on Valentine's Day or going to your work Christmas party and feeling like your partner is too attractive for you or whatever, whatever it is, any of what any of the things I mentioned. Um this needs to end here. This needs to end. You deserve to have a whole year, every single season with fun and joy and not constantly thinking that you're not OK. And even if it's not constant for you, even if it's just something that comes up once a day or once a week, that's still too much. You don't have to feel like that. Things can be different. There is another way to feel about yourself. So you just don't even have to think about it that much. And yes, there'll be times where something will happen and you'll be like, oh, don't feel so good today. But let that be something that is so infrequent. Let that be something that happens once every six months versus once every six days or every six minutes or whatever. You deserve to have that freedom away from shame. It's not your shame to feel anyway. You've not done anything wrong. You're just trying to live life in your body. Your body is not wrong. It's this society that teaches you that you should be ashamed. And, you know, these events that happen that trigger that shame. And it's not yours. It's not yours to hold. That shame is not yours to hold. So let it free. Kick it into the bin. Yeet it into the sun, as the kids say. I'm in touch with the kids, yeah. Okay, so um, if you want some more of this juicy, fat goodness, then uh, go to my Facebook group, Fierce Fatty Friends, and uh, answer the questions to get in, because if you don't answer the questions, we won't let you in. We we'll have to make sure that you're not uh, a troll or, you know, a robot or whatever. And uh, hey, I've got a. Uh, I'm, I'm on TikTok. I'm on TikTok now. So follow me on TikTok or not. Do what you want. I'm not the boss of you. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, it's been a slice, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, fatty. See you later.